Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and uh, last time I received a couple of different products from Zemismart. There was a Zigbee um, dimmer and there was two metal bulbs as well. And even though we didn't talk about that, I also received this uh, matter compatible uh, LED strip controller uh, in the package, which was a surprise for me. So I thought I'm just going to quickly create a video on that because, um, well, you know, just as a light, uh, I mean, even though it's an interesting device, it is a, you know, it's a simple function. It is very easy to go through it in this uh, review. But um, I thought, well, for me, it was a new product. I have seen bulbs. I haven't seen um, uh, LED controllers before, although it's, you know, pretty much the same function when you think about it. It's, you know, it controls lights and brightness and colors and color temperatures. So you can package it in a light bulb, but you might as well package it in a simple box that you can connect your LED strips to. And then now you can control accent lights and hidden lights and mood lights and everything. So um, yeah, it's a good product. Uh, why we shouldn't have ones? Uh, and you know, if you are dedicated to using matter, then you just have a new product that you can, you know, control different lights with. And uh, because it's matter, it's very easy to use it with either Google or Amazon or Smart Things or Apple HomeKit. So I use it with Google because I have a Nest Hub which acts as my border router for matter devices. But uh, the functionality is going to be the same for, as I said, Alexa or HomePod. And you can just use those devices as well without having get the additional hub. It's easy to set up, it's easy to control, and it works just fine. So as you can see here, I can control two different, well, not two different LED strips, but I don't have that special LED strips at home, which this one is designed for. So it has two different modes. So you can control colors and you can see, I can change the color wheel and the color, temp color changes, but you can also use as a white light for color temperature. So then I can, you know, mix the, uh, the different, uh, uh, ratio of warm white and cold light and I can control I can create these uh, different uh, white uh, color balances or color temperatures. I don't have a, a cool light LED strips so I'm just using these two so uh, one is connected to the warm white output the other one is connected to the cold white output so that I can show you how it works but uh, Ideally, you want to use this with a five channel LED strips, which are usually called RGBCW. And you can see the terminals as well, RGBCW. So those are the RGB as red, green, blue, and then two extra channels for cold white and warm white as well. And that's how it uses these five channels, the different you know, LEDs on that strip to create any you know, colors uh, like you know, these or then it uses the other LEDs to co uh, create uh, colors, color temperatures. So as you can see, just like with also the light bulbs and everything, where it is less visible because everything is covered, now everything is out in the air, so you can see this. So it uses the colors, uh, the color output, so the RGB outputs, if you want to use any colors, specific colors, but then if you sort of switch to the temperature, color temperature mode or white mode, then it switches over to the other two outputs, the CW, to create the, uh, the colors that you need. So it never uses uh, all five outputs at the same time. So it's either the three colors or the two color temperature outputs. And that also means that you can use this, well, like I did, you can use uh, this with any sort of like not uh, RGB CW strips. If you have a very simple strip like I have, which only has, you know, one single color, let's say warm white or cold white, then you can con uh, connect it either to the C or the uh, W output, but then just make sure that on the, uh, you know, when you are controlling the color from the screen, you set it to a particular color and you don't change that. So if I only have this, uh, you know, uh, it's connected to the warm. So this is the warm LED. I can set this color temperature to warm. So this uh, channel is used, but, uh, and then I would just use the main screen. Oops, sorry, uh, going back, done. And I would use the main screen to control the brightness. So in that case, I'm not using of any other channels, but uh, that's sort of a workaround if you don't want to buy the slightly more expensive, you know, RGB CW uh, LED strips. Or again, you can use it with RGB only, then just make sure that you only use this color wheel to select the color because that's 
is that's what's going to drive the free color outputs. So I think you get the idea now. And then of course you have a big uh, slider here to control brightness. You can turn it, uh, click in here to turn it on and off. And um, yeah, it says that an error occurred, but uh, actually it was working fine. And yeah, that's how it works. So you can control uh, the device to turn on and off. Of course, when you turn it off and when you turn it back on, it will remember the brightness and the colors that was used last time. And then you can use, you know, brightness, you can change brightness. You can select any of the predefined colors here. So it's by default, it's showing uh, color temperature presets and you can use the color wheel to change to any colors that you want. And that's pretty much it. And I think with that, I've probably done the, you know, how it works in <laughs> the Google Home app and, uh, you know, how you can use it. And as I said, the Alexa app is going to be very similar. The Apple Home, uh, sorry, the Apple Home application is going to be very similar. The functionality is going to be the same. Probably the screen is going to be slightly different. So what I'm going to do is now just going to, you know, head over to the actual device and do show you the, well, the wiring, the way I did it, and also some of the inputs and the outputs. So when you receive this device, you get it in this box and, uh, the only notable thing in this box is the specs. So it is called ZML3. And by the way, let me just quickly switch the listing. So it is a, um, selling for 16.50 USD at the moment. And you can buy two different, oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, so it looks like that there are two different versions. So there is a CW version and there is an RGB CW, even though the pictures are the same. Um, so the difference here is that uh, if you buy the CW version, then in the app, you don't have the color options. So if you want to, if you're planning to use it for the CW uh, LED strip or just a single color LED strip, probably you want to buy this uh, CW version so you can't accidentally click on the colors and then get confused why it is not working. But uh, you can see that the price is a little bit different. Actually, it is cheaper to buy the RGB CW. So maybe you can buy that and then spend the extra money on the LED strips, but it's really up to you. And uh, yeah, there is nothing really else in this listing other than, you know, talking about the usual features and voice control and everything and, you know, controlling brightness and colors that I've already shown you. So let's just skip that and go back to the product. So very simple packaging. It doesn't need anything else, to be honest. You also get a small documentation which talks about, you know, wiring and how you set it up. And these screenshots look like Apple home screenshots. No, uh, there are actually some Apple, Alexa and Google screenshots as well. You can just read it. It's, you know, it's nothing special, to be honest. Uh, probably the other thing which worth noting is the power connections, which I'm going to show you as well, but you can see it in the documentation that you have two options for power. So if you have a power adapter with a 2.1 millimeter battery jack, you can just plug this in. So you don't even have to, you know, put in the wires and, and screw them in. But if you have a, probably like a, you know, a longer strip, which requires more prior power, then you would uh, buy a proper transformer for LED strips and then you would use the terminals and we also have some uh, reset button and then you have the we have the terminals on the other side which I'm going to show you here anyway so back to the power side so you can see this is the power input and these are the inputs for the uh, oops uh, for positive and negative if you want to connect that way so either use this plug or these two terminals there is a reset hole and there is a status LED that's it. So on the output side, so as I said, I, we have the five channels in this model. So RGB, CW, so it is red, green, blue, and cold white and warm white, and a V plus, so this is common positive. So in my case, if you want to use a st uh, like a simple RGB LED strip, the RGB LED strip usually have four outputs. So it has RGB, as you can see it here, uh, so from the right is blue, red and green. And then the common positive, well, in this case is marked with uh, red, sorry, black. So the black goes to V plus and the RGB goes to RGB. Yeah. And this strip that I used here, so it has basically just two outputs, positive and negative. So the positive goes to V plus and negative goes to either the C or the W. 
And as I said, if you buy the RGB CW uh, LED strip, it would have six wires coming out of it. So that would be a common positive that goes to V plus. And then you have the RGB goes to RGB and there will be two more lines which then connect to C and W. And uh, that's how you set it up. And that's pretty much it. And as I said, you can mix and match and uh, you get this functionality with, you know, timers and everything that you can set up in these applications. So um, it, you know, covers the basics and it drives these LEDs. And I think the other one that I didn't mention because I was switching to this view is that it can drive up to five amps on each of the channels. So it's 25 amps in total, which is, I think it's fairly decent. Uh, you can, you know, drive a fairly long strip with 25 amps or, you know, five amps on a single channel. Um, and yeah, it's metro over Wi-Fi and uh, yeah, it works from 12 to 24 volts. So you can use it with regular 12 volt LED strips like mine, but especially for longer LED strips, the higher voltage means that it draws less amps. So it's going to, it's going to be more efficient. There is going to be less losses in the uh, LED strip because less amps needs to follow, well, sorry, less amps needs to travel through these fairly uh, thin wires. So that's definitely useful. So if you have the options for a longer installation, then probably you should use 24 volts uh, with the LED strips and also then you need a 24 volt power adapter. So I think that will be all for today. If you are interested in this device, you will find the link in the video description, but that's going to be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.